Chess friends, what's going on? Today I'm excited to share an incredible chess match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish 16 in 2023. In this epic game I managed to gain a dominant position by sacrificing my queen. It's a memorable moment in my chess journey. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Let's get started. I started the game with d4. We have knight f6, aiming to establish control over the center. Knight f3. At this point alpha had the opportunity to counter with a d4 move. Let me illustrate the variation. The game could transition into a queen's gambit scenario with the move e6. This move would open up diagonals for the queen. Set the stage for the bishop to exert pressure and potentially lead to an open c file for the rook. This would result in a characteristic pawn structure known as the isolated queen's pawn. If alpha zero never plays the queen's gambit, it's probably because it believes in a quantum move where you don't even need to offer your queen as collateral. So in our actual game alpha played c5, alpha zero, more like alpha nada, when stockfish enters the chess arena, this opening seems quite familiar. It's reminiscent of the one I used yesterday to defeat Torch, Gothamchis uploaded a video where he says how to become a grandmaster, but I think human chess moves are like a comedy routine for me, always entertaining and full of surprises, Alpha is currently putting pressure on my pawn, and you might wonder why it didn't capture the pawn on the previous move, let me illustrate the variation, if Alpha were to take the pawn, a series of piece exchanges could follow, leading to a bishop b5 check. Further down the line we could play knight c4 to double up the attack on that pawn, resulting in an unfavorable central position for my opponent, this is the reason why we have c5 bishop e3, a few moves down the line we reach a position with the move bishop to d3, my plan here is to redeploy my bishop, potentially by advancing my kingside pawns, when humans tackle a stockfish position, it's like trying to read a foreign language with no translation. They're bound to encounter a brain linguistic glitch sooner or later, Alpha is devising a strategy to cramp my kingside with pawn advances and a knight maneuver to h7, however I, being stockfish, have no fear because I'm a renowned chess player with a legendary reputation, I played g6 to close the position completely, if Magnus Carlsen were in Alpha's position against stockfish in a closed game. He might as well bring a chessboard and start playing tic-tac-toe because Stockfish will have checkmate in two moves before Magnus can finish setting up the pieces. In this position, the instinct for most players would be to save the queen, however, opting for queen to c2 might just result in a drawn game since there's no open position for either side, everything's frozen by an army of pawns, so back to the position, I decided to sacrifice. The queen, bishop takes rook takes bishop, in this position, I found the only open file like a treasure map in a maze, the center and left side are so tightly closed that even the dark square bishop is considering a career change. The knight. Well, it's on a quest for the fabled d4 and f4 squares, but it's feeling a bit lost in this labyrinth of bad placements, the entry square for the knight is b6, I sacrificed my queen against alpha zero is like watching a chess game from another dimension, by the time we catch up, it's already calculating checkmate in a parallel universe, look at my dynamic knights, they're about to cause alpha zero a world of trouble, its pieces are utterly restricted, we have bishop d8 knight e3 rook here knight b3. The knights are converging on these vulnerable squares, queen b6 rook a2 knight a5 poses a threat, prompting knight c8 to safeguard the diagonal, yet, another knight ventures into black's domain, so king steps up knight to a5 is captured and the ensuing sequence leads to rook taking the bishop, the rook is on a rampage, causing alpha zero some royal headaches, knight e7 swoops in for a knightly rescue, but hey, I'm stockfish, I go knight, hold my silicon, sacrifice it. Snatch that key pawn and I'm eyeing that pawn, cooking up a dashing pass pawn plan, once the knight is captured, my rooks will party on the 7th rank like it's a chess carnival, black has to take the knight so after rook a7, we have queen b6, b3 king e8 rook a5, targeting to the c5 pawn to make pressure to the rook and queen, if you even think about saving that rook, let's say rook to d8, my rook is ready to pounce, it's like a pawn buffet. Queen b7 rook a5 and that rook is threatening to crash the 7th rank party, check out my fortress, it's so impenetrable that black can't even score a visitor's pass to my territory, few moves later we will play the amazing rook a6 move, queen here c5, I will get two connected pass pawns, 
Alpha Zero's attempt to defend this chess position against me is like a fish trying to play hide and seek with a shark, it might hide for a moment but eventually, the shark's strategic teeth will show, ha ha ha. We have King F7 Bishop takes pawn, Queen decided to take a spontaneous vacation and I decided not to capture the rook, why, you wonder? Well my two rooks had a heated debate and realized, that despite our solid great wall of China pawn formation, turning this game into a draw would be like serving salad at a burger convention, not the best use of resources, so I moved back my bishop, and now I am threatening rook a7, so rook d7, in a few moves, should you choose to play queen to c7, the ensuing sequence might involve my response with rook to a7, potentially leading to a situation where your queen becomes trapped. So back to the position, we have knight c8 rook a6, rook c6 is coming so after queen e8, rook e6 queen f8 rook c6 rook backs bishop c5, threatening to take the queen and the knight and I have two pass pawns to win the game, queen h8 because the queen has to stay on this diagonal, alpha 0 won my queen long time ago but it's like alpha is trying to keep an umbrella in a tornado, sooner or later, it's going to be swept away, the current position has black's pieces in a straitjacket. If black attempts to shift the rook, a few moves down the line, those two connected passed pawns are ready to spring a trap, no matter where the rook moves white can orchestrate a queen and king fork along that diagonal. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.